Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 194. The truth about mental math. It's not just in your head. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Back in episode 176, I gave a preview of Pam Harris's book, Developing Mathematical Reasoning, Avoiding the Trap of Algorithms. Now that book has officially been published. And however, if you try to order it on Amazon, I'll give you a little hint. It says it's still a pre-order and it won't arrive until May 31st. So I'll link up where you can purchase the book through the publisher Corwin on the show notes, which is buildmathminds.com 194. To celebrate the release of her book, I'm actually re-releasing the session she did recently at the Virtual Math Summit, and it's all about avoiding the trap of algorithms. If you didn't get to watch it or you want to share it with colleagues, it will be available for one week, and I'll link it up on the show notes page as well. Developing mathematical reasoning, avoiding the trap of algorithms, is full of ways to, you guessed it, develop mathematical reasoning for your students. This is often what some people consider doing mental math. And if you're not watching, I totally did air quotes. As I was going through the book, one of the tips caught my attention. So I thought I'd share it with you. One thing I've noticed is that many teachers believe that having students do mental math means having students do the math in their heads. No paper or pencil is allowed. So here's a tip from Pam's book. When asking people math questions to determine how they are thinking about the problem, have paper and pen slash pencil handy. Do not make people keep all their thinking in their head. Allow them to write to keep track of the relationships they are using. To paraphrase Kathy Fasno, mathematical reasoning is not about doing it all in your head. It's about doing it with your head. It's perfectly acceptable to keep track of your mental thinking. Mental math isn't meant to be only done in our minds. I loved this part. It's not about doing it all in your head. It's about doing it with your head. As you are working with students on building their thinking strategies around mathematical operations and not just following rote procedures, allow them to write things down. We do when they're doing the procedures, right? Written symbols is just a notation device. It doesn't mean a student is or isn't using an algorithm just because they're using paper pencil. We often think that if a student is doing mental math, then they're doing strategies. That there are lots of people who do the algorithm in their mind when asked to do mental math. That's the way I was and so was Pam. If you've ever heard her talk, she talks about it a lot. We did the algorithm in our heads because we didn't have any other way to think about it. It didn't matter if it was mental math or paper slash pencil math. All we had was the procedures of the algorithms. So the goal isn't to have them do it all in their head. The goal is to help students build their thinking strategies by developing mathematical reasoning so that they can use those strategies on paper, pencil, or in their head. So remember, I'm going to add all the links, which includes the previous podcast I did about Pam's book, her virtual math summit session that we will have out for only a week, and her book, it's all going to be over at the show notes page, buildmathminds.com slash 194. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep building those math minds. 